absolute shambles from start to finish. You know, I was trying to. I felt I felt sorry for Steve King, but that's no reason why somebody should keep their job. You know, because you, you, what I felt sorry for is that no one should be treated like that. No one should get the abuse that he was getting. No one should have to go around with bodyguards and live their life like that. But, then yeah, but he imagine, wants that, doesn't he? Uh, he wants that. I mean, he came out this week. He mm. could have said, "Look." I, I walk away, I don't yeah. need this, I've taken the club down, someone else can take over, but he appears to want it, he says I'm not going anywhere. Well yeah, I, I don't think he wants that sort of treatment, but he wants the job, um, because he knows that where's he going to go and get another job uh, of that stature. I think that is that is the reason why, to be honest, you look he's at his record. He's just taking them down, where's he going to exactly, get any job? Exactly, when you look at his record, he shouldn't be in the job, you know, uh, and you know, he's talking about we've lost key players, well he's the manager, you've got to keep key players. I'll tell you, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, this mm. deserves a bit more of a conversation, so we're going to have mm. the conversation about Blackburn, uh, we're going to take a short break and we'll be back soon. <laughs> Good evening and welcome back to Thursday Night Live with me Darren Lewis and Leroy Rossini in the Sports Tonight studio. We're talking Blackburn uh, this section and uh, Blackburn they really are struggling uh, to, to make any sort of semblance of, of, of normality after being relegated. Steve Keane, I was saying before the break, insisting that he wants to remain in charge. So all of this abuse that he's been receiving clearly not affecting him or not worrying him out of walking away. The owners appear not to have a clue what they're doing. Uh, we saw the appearance of the Blackburn Chicken. Bit of foul play at Ewood Park yeah. uh, on Monday night during their game against Wigan. The game that of course saw them relegated. Uh, and you were saying before the break that as far as you're concerned you still feel that Steve Keane should be in charge? I mean, just clarify what your position is. No, he shouldn't, he shouldn't, be, he shouldn't be in charge. But what I did say was I don't think anybody deserves to be treated that way. I don't, I, I supporters, you know, I can but understand but the frustration. Let me just interrupt yeah, you. Let yeah. me just interrupt you. Uh, forgive me for this. But mm -hmm. You say nobody deserves to be treated that way. Mm -hmm. This is football. Mm -hmm. In football, mm -hmm. where emotions run high. Nobody at any level is condoning uh, any sort of violence or whatever else. Mm -hmm. uh, but emotions do run high. And I would also contend mm -hmm. the anger of the fans is more directed at the owners mm -hmm. rather than at Steve Key because they sacked a man like Sam Allardyce, as we were saying, very experienced, mm -hmm. very capable, and replaced him with a virtual novice. Yeah, totally good. I mean, but it wasn't, it's, not been, it's not been directed at the owners because they haven't been there. So it's all been directed at, at Steve King. You've had managers walking out of games because the, the abuse was so, so vile. Now, I think supporters, you know, they have the right to be frustrated, they have the right to be angry. Mm. But you, you've got to do it at the right times. Protest before the game, protest after the game. I'm not against that at all. Mm. But during the game, getting you know, thrown vile abuse or something is wrong. Well, I mean, the, the reason I disagree so with that, I mean, you know, we, we've seen loads of images of the fans over the last few mm. days. Uh, which have obviously been very disturbing indeed but I take the view that as far as the fans are concerned they see the game as the opportunity on a national platform to make their feelings known. Now, on a week to week basis where there are more been, sexy things happening elsewhere. This has been happening all year. This it has been, not been like, absolutely. And somebody, made and, the point, so. and somebody said to me I wonder if the Blackburn supporters who got behind behind the players when they were five points clear or whatever during games whether they got enough points to stay up. It's a good question. Because supporters are there to support. I understand their frustration. The owners are, are just ridiculous in the way they've had. The manager is out of its depth. But the players have, at times have shown fantastic spirit. Young players who are not good enough, haven't got the quality, but they try to stick in there. And so I, some I'm people would say, one of the supporters have got behind the team and it's not hasn't been an atmosphere which has been vitriolic. In all, it's been awful, venomous, sorry, is the word I was looking for. And undermined what the players were trying to do because the players are trying no Blackburn supporters can come in and say the players are trying they can come in and say the players were not good enough but they have tried their best it hasn't been good enough and they needed support I think fans up and down the country have a right to express their anger if they're unhappy we mm. saw Burnley fans who, who were unhappy uh, at their football club and they made their own pro uh, protest mm. uh, in, in favour of Blackburn and they're their rivals uh, uh, and, and, mm. and they made their, almost their own sort of uh, statement if you mm. like uh, earlier this week but from my point of view I believe that if fans are unhappy mm. with the way their football club has been run they have a right to make it clear and, and the reason I say that is because we all saw what happened to Portsmouth mm. before anybody could do anything about it suddenly they were in a I mess and they were tumbling I down the don't disagree with you. Blackburn fans have got the right and I you don't know, disagree with you wait a minute let me finish let me just come in there because I don't disagree with you at all I agree with everything you've just said but there's a time and place. There's a time and place to do it correctly where you'll be heard. Sometimes you can protest 
and people don't hear it because you're protesting at the wrong time in the wrong way and all I heard was abuse towards uh, that man I didn't hear what their protests were about and so they had they had this barrier managers walking out saying that was a disgrace they weren't hearing the message so when you want to get a message across there is a time and a place and a proper way to do it to get it a, a, and then I, was, I spoke to a Blackburn sport he put his cat on it I totally understand where you're coming from this is one of the best community clubs in, in the country to be run brilliantly Jack Walker these people have run this club fantastically they won the Premier League you know what other community club could do that Blackburn a magnificent club he's been running to the ground totally understand that but I will still argue there's a time and a place to protest for that club ok well we've got somebody who is going to give Leroy both barrels straight away because Tom's waiting on our Skype wall to have his point of view we're going to give it to him good evening Tom hello there uh, you've heard what uh, Leroy's got to say. Leroy says that there's a time and a place and you've been not taking the right time and the right place to make your feelings known. What's your reaction to that? Um, I'm quite baffled by you, uh, both of your points, to be honest. I mean, you, you've completely excluded quite a few facts. Um, firstly, the protests aren't that vile, as you put it. Um, you look at the QPR game the other day against Tottenham Hotspur, and you've got the fans swearing and, you know, it's Tottenham players on the touchline. Then you compare it to the Blackburn Rovers protests and you've got fans saying sack Steve Keane, sack, sack Benkeys, get you know, get out of our club. Tom, it's before you speak, swearing. So it's something to interrupt you there. Get. Tom, but I, spoke to, I spoke to Premier League managers who are at a game <laughs> and I spoke to a person who left at half-time because they said they never heard it's just vile abuse towards a person in their lives at Ewood Park. I will, add to, that. Fact. I will add to that mm. as well, because mm. I mean, every, we all know about Sky Sports directional microphones which sit on the touchline uh, at every Premier League ground, and I think the idea that they were not picking up expletives. <laughs> it, you're going to get mad stadiums, though. Well, well, so, so either you're people. saying that there were no swearing or you're saying there is, but you can't be baffled that people are saying that the kind of thing they're hearing at a football ground is not palatable, because it isn't. And I think, you know, yeah, you're, you may be saying that the aggression that people are, are maybe are describing wasn't there. But again, you know, I could say again, I, I watched that game on Monday night and, and I saw a fair bit of aggression in the stands, uh, Tom. So I, I think that would be a bit disingenuous as well. The feelings are running high and understandably so. But I don't think that we can try and paint uh, Blackburn fans as angels. They're angry and they want their view to be heard. That's exactly why we've got you on the show. Let's not forget a few key things, though. If you go to Manchester United, Old Trafford, you go to White Hart Lane, Tottenham Hotspur, you're going to have fans there from all over the country who are there to support the team. If something bad happens, they'll protest. If something good happens, then they'll praise the squad and the team. What you have at Blackburn Rovers is a higher proportion of people from the area who work in the area who are going to be directly affected by any relegation. You've got 40% of the club's staff at present who are going to be laid off because of this relegation. What people are protesting about isn't necessarily what people would protest about at other grounds. But, but, but Tom, you've you, you baffled me here because there's been clubs who, who, who've been relegated and lots of people have lost their job, but the manager hasn't needed two bodyguards uh, to walk, walk around. Yeah, and about so, this bodyguard so let's be, let's be honest, let's be honest there because I've heard it. I've watched live games. And I told you, you know, I understand your anger and frustration. This, we're not in disagreement here. What I'm saying is sometimes the way it has come across has been mm -hmm. over the top, it's been abusive, and it's been vile. And, I, and that is my opinion. And so I just feel that, and I spoke to Blackburn Rovers, but I said, yeah, you're spot on. That is terrible, what, what's happening to your club. But that hasn't got across. You've, lost, you've been lost in all the anger. Your point of view has been lost in the anger. And Steve Key has got people who support him. They think, oh, no, yeah, you stick it out now because, yeah, because of the way you've been treated. That's not what you wanted. So maybe you need to take another approach to get your message across. Well, let me ask you this question. How many times has Steve Keane been attacked? Steve Keane's talking about being frightened about walking about in the area. And the time, at the time he hired this bodyguard, he wasn't even living in Blackburn. You know, he was living in Surrey. How many times have you seen a football manager walking around in the streets around the stadium of a football club that he works at? Well, you, know, they, they, you don't I, have to be attacked to feel threatened. You know, it's, a, it's the threat. It's a, you react to the threat. You don't react when you get but attacked. You see, I have to say, I, I agree with Tom. I, 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 I think that this whole bodyguard thing from Steve King is a bit of an overreaction. Because I think as far as 
Uh, he's we've never seen. I don't know what if you've seen. It, I've mm-hmm. never seen a, a manager of any football club be attacked here in English football. Well, May what have happened. Well, I, I've just never seen it, and I just I think it's almost drawing attention to that that the possibility of that rather than him just go about his normal business. People feel strongly about it, but let no me give one would handle the show let me would condone you, that kind of let me give you a scenario. Let me give you a scenario manager. that, you, and Tom's right. What they're pr- protesting about at Blackburn is much stronger than a lot of clubs have ever protested about. It's usually about relegation and the team not playing well. When I was manager of Brentford, we got beat 4-0. I got sacked. I needed a police escort out of that ground. If I hadn't had that police escort, I'd have been in trouble. Because the fans were angry, and rightly so, we were playing rubbish. But the fans really tried to get at you. If I didn't have that police escort, at that moment in time, I felt that the fans would have tried to get me. If I tried to walk out that ground, I'd have been jostled, something might have happened. That's how you feel. We don't, I don't know what I, you know, I don't think Brentford supporters are a violent towards me or anything, but at that moment, that precise moment, the tensions were running high. That, that's how it is as a football manager. So, now, so, so don't tell me, don't tell me that he doesn't feel threatened because okay. he does. Okay, okay. okay. So, so yeah. having, having explained that, then, mm-hmm. and that's a, it's an excellent point to mm-hmm. make back to you, Tom. Mm-hmm. But yeah. having said that, mm-hmm. do you understand how bad like Tom feels? Abso- and I understood how the Brentford fans feel. I, well. I would have sat things, myself mate. at the time. Tom, I would have sat myself at the time. I was so rubbish as well. But that's not the point. But Tom, I, I totally understand how you. <laughs> I totally understand how you feel. And do you know what, Tom? I'll tell you another story. Yeah, about Steve Keen. I went up for, to be um, Sam Manager versus coach. I was one of the coaches before we went for that job and got at to a Blackburn. second at Blackburn and got to a second interview. And Steve Keen got the job ahead of me. So it could have been me that you could have been abusing. But <laughs> but, but it's a. I wish fan- you had been appointed. To I'll be tell honest. you what. What a fantastic just, club. A fantastic. Can setup. I just ask you a quick question? What yeah. kind of a football manager at a football club brings his children alone to press yeah. conferences yeah. when he f- knows that he's going to be asked questions about his future role at a club? Yeah, I think you're absolutely what? right. I thought that was a disgraceful thing to do to bring his little boy, wasn't it, into the press conference to ask questions. It was. Just, uh, it was to it, ask questions. Well, to, into the press, uh, the post match press conference. He took his little boy, didn't he, Tom? Into the yeah, into it's, uh, there's other things going on at that, uh, going on at the club that you wouldn't know about at the moment. The tell us about them. The tell us, tell us, actually... tell us, Tom. Sorry. Tell us. Right. Okay. Um, ru- well, st- very strong rumours from people that I know are reliable. Um, people are refunding their tickets, their season tickets, in droves. So that three thousand season ticket sale number is actually reversing. Um, Finkies are currently looking at selling a large portion of the academy training ground to property developers to balance the books. This is something that, bearing in mind in the past, they were talking about having the club self-sustainable, you know, the academy puts in players and the same. How can you base the financial future of a team on its academy if you're selling off segments of the academy? Jack Walker put in millions and millions of pounds of his own money in the last few years of his life when he was really quite poorly to create a dream and they're effectively tearing this dream to pieces as we speak. They're going to be selling off vast numbers of the uh, first team to balance the books as well. Let's bear in mind that something around £8 million has gone missing uh, in comparison with player sales, sales and player signings. You know, it, it stinks. And I, I was watching um, uh, Scudamore's comments earlier today. Um, I've been trying to contact the uh, the Premier League because they dealt with the um, the fit and proper persons test. I've been trying to contact them for two days, and they haven't been willing to talk to me. They've been giving me the same generic replies, and I just think that if anybody including football fans of other clubs, took the moment to read the facts, then you might all be quite disturbed at the reality of what's happening. Right, I'm going to just stop you for a second, Tom. Tom, I don't don't condone any abuse of a football manager, but when you bear in mind he's the only person that's receiving information from Benkeys and passing out information onto the media and the general public, you know... Yeah, they've just sat Paul Hunt, for goodness sakes, and he's the only person that was talking to the fans about the future of the football club. Now, I'm going to just stop you for a second, Tom. There's a couple of things that we're going to make clear. Obviously, um, there's no evidence of any wrongdoing on the part of the owners of uh, Blackburn, and mm. I think we've got to make that clear. Uh, Tom's comments are allegations. 
uh, and observations that Tom has made. They obviously don't represent the views of Sports Tonight TV. And I think the other thing to make very clear as well is that as far as uh, Paul Hunt is concerned, Paul Hunt was the CEO who was in charge, wrote a letter to Venkis uh, back in December uh, warning them of the problems as he saw them if Steve Keane were to remain in charge at the football club and uh, he lost his job yesterday. Venky said that as part of a cost-cutting exercise. <laughs> uh, exactly, Tom, <laughs> that's Tom's reaction uh, to that. Uh, but I think obviously it's very important to make clear that these are Tom's observations. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and I think from the player's point of view, and I'm going to bring you in on this, mm -hmm. Leroy, I think from the player's point of view, you could not be blamed if you were to turn around and say, look, I think I need to go elsewhere. Chris Sambo made the right decision mm -hmm. when he decided he wanted out. Mm -hmm. Ryan Nelson's gone to Spurs. Mm -hmm. You expect lots of other players to leave as well. I certainly do. I expect Junior Hoylet to his pace bank being linked with the move, move to Germany. To and also and to Spurs and Arsenal yeah, Spurs as well. Arsenal, but he can go on free to Europe. Yes. Uh, because of his age and uh, the situation that he's in. You know, you look at Yakubu, uh, uh, another one's got Dan. Uh, and, and Martin Olsen up there, you know, but you know the rest of them are, are very young, and I think they'll find it very difficult to go uh, and, and move to, to another club at the moment. So they're, they're in absolute turmoil, uh, and I, I agree with Tom on, on that aspect. And the facts, are, and these are facts, are that the owners are coming. I feel and not understood what the club's about and be able to deal with it. I agree with that. Now, a couple more, a couple more, a couple more things before you come on. Before you come on, Tom, because I'm just going to make a couple of things. Also clear, uh, the owners of have uh, uh, put out a statement tonight uh, where they've said that there is nothing in rumours that the club is for sale following their relegation from the Premier League. Uh, but also very interesting, writing in the Lancashire Telegraph uh, up at your place, Tom, uh, Jack Straw, the former Foreign Secretary, the former Home Secretary, I should say, mm -hmm. has written uh, a piece uh, very similar to what you've been saying. He says, at the heart of the Premier League, willful neglect of his responsibilities is its so-called fit and proper persons test. The test is laughable and everyone in the business knows this. It allows no period of probation for new owners, no assessment of their managerial competence, no disclosure of the insidious role of agents. The Premier League must now mount a full investigation into what business model Rankings thought they were buying and how much money has been made by those who sold them this model. The problem that he has and you have is that the Premier League have responded to this today and they say that it is not their role to run football clubs. <laughs> Basically, this uh, fit and proper persons test uh, establishes a number of things, but it's not. It doesn't have to establish how much money uh, a, a, a prospective owner has to put into a club. Mm -hmm. What it does has to do is find out if they've had any previous convictions. Uh, and, and all. So, as far as they're concerned, <laughs> they're saying it's not for them to jump in if somebody who takes over a club. Is not very good at running football exactly, clubs, yeah. and I think that's fair enough. Surely, yeah, surely, yeah. Tom, it's fair enough until you become a fan of a football club like Plymouth or Portsmouth Football Club. Um, what's going on at the moment is destroying the club. Let's, let's let's take one thing for a fact: Paul Hunt did not leak that letter. That letter was not leaked by Paul Hunt. That's why they haven't sacked him for being unprofessional or anything. I know for a fact that he didn't leak that letter, and they are going to, off to this other excuse of, well, you know, finances. Let's not forget that they hired him in the first place. Um, I, think know, the is, Tom, I think the point is, Tom, Tom, Tom so, I just sorry, sorry to interrupt, I think the point that Dan's trying to make is, is, yeah. that, is that I think it's a responsibility for the people, in a, in a way, to, who sell the club to make sure they hand it on to someone who's going to look after the club. It's not for the FA, they can't decide. Because you would think that someone, there's lots of people you'd think are fantastic owners and clubs have just been unsuccessful, not because of the way they've run it. But obviously, you know, looking at from where we are, we can see that the, 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 there's no, been no interaction between the, the supporters and Venkis. You want, you, want, you want to feel that you're being heard. You want to feel that, that the way they're running the club is out there so everybody knows what the plan is. And so at the, at the moment, the club is just seems to be in limbo. And you've got a manager who's under severe pressure and, and, and a little bit out of his depth at the moment. Tom, look, thanks for coming on. Obviously, there'll be lots of occasions for us to get into this even further. We know that you've been excellent in terms of keeping us here on Sports Tonight TV abreast of what's been going on at uh, Blackburn, and we do uh, thank you for that. So thank you very much indeed for coming on again. I'm sure you'll be back with us soon. Uh, mm -hmm. Just to wrap up uh, before we go to the break, uh, Peter Sk uh, Richard Scudamore has been talking, the Premier League Chief of Executive, 
and he says, and I'm going to quote him verbatim, we have rules, quite strict rules, they've passed all the ownership tests, he's talking about Binkies, that we apply in terms of the legality of their ownership, funding and the right to own a football club. But clearly, when it came to the decision making and performance of the club this season, it has not been pop enough to keep them in the league. But you cannot possibly expect us to be sitting in our office in London and running clubs. We don't just run clubs at all, we put in place a framework of rules, but the owners themselves run clubs. So very sad for Blackburn, but the bottom line is they're run by a group of people who don't appear to know what they are doing. We know what we're doing, we're back after the break, we're going to talk boxing and a bit more football. See you soon.